Okay, in this video, we are going to be looking into a handy piece of software running on the Nano, and this software is the I squared C scanner. Now, the I squared C bus of the Nano is connected up to three ICs on my breadboard, which you can see here, and the first two is the PCF8574. Now, they're 8 bit GPIO expander ICs, and the last chip is a serial EEPROM, a 24C04. And they're all, they're all connected up to the I2C bus. You can see my two pull-up resistors for my data and clock lines. And each IC has its own unique address, a 7-bit address. And the range of these addresses is from hex 8 to hex 77. So the first IC, I've, I've uh, jumped it up for hex 20. The second IC is hex 25. And the third IC is hex 54. Now these are 7-bit addresses. And sometimes in documentation, They'll give you an 8-bit address because the 8th bit indicates a read or write and if they indicate that as the, as the address uh, it will not work. You have to have a 7-bit address. So that's why I like to scan first before I start writing code. So I would scan this I2C bus and make sure I would get the three addresses of my three ICs. Now sometimes you get a sensor and in the documentation they don't even give you the I2C address like my time of flight range sensor. So I had a hook this up to a scanner so I could actually get the I2C address so I could write some code. Okay, I have my sensor connected to my Nano and I'm going to run a scanner program that will scan I2C addresses from hex 8 to hex 77. So that's the range of I2C addresses for 7-bit addressing. So I'll run my program. It's called Scanner. And you can see it picked out hex 52 as my address. So you can see it's pretty handy to have an I2C scanner program running. So you could actually get the proper addresses before you start writing code. Now on most ICs, on the 7-bit addressing, 3 bits will be variable. And you can see on these chips, the first 3 pins, 1, 2, and 3, are your addresses A0, A1, A2. And you could jump them accordingly to get your, to get your address. And if you look on this I squared C LCD converter, you can see it has three jumper pads. And those, those are your three variable uh, uh, address bits that you could jumper so you could set the address of this I squared C to LCD uh, interface. So we'll hook up the Nano to my computer and we'll run my little scanner program and we'll scan these three ICs to make sure that they have the proper I squared C address. Okay, I have TerraTerm up and running on my computer and it's connected to my Nano so I could run my little I squared C scanner and we should pick up my three ICs that's connected up to my I squared C bus on the Nano and we should see addresses hex 20, hex 25 and hex 54. So I'll run the program and there you can see the addresses we picked up four. We got hex 20, hex 25, hex 54 and we got an extra one hex 55. So we'll have to look up the data sheet on the serial EEPROM and see why we got two addresses for that IC. Okay, here's the data sheet for the serial EEPROM, the 24C04. And if you look at the data sheet, it says A0 is not used on the 24C04. It must be connected to either VCC or VSS. So that's the external pin, so A0 is not being used. And if we look down further, right here, it says the seventh bit of that byte 80 is used to select the upper block or the lower block. So this vendor is splitting this serial EEPROM into two blocks, an upper block and a lower block, and giving it each its own address. So that's why we saw 54 and 55. So 54 would be the upper block and 55 would be the lower block. So we have to use two addresses if you want to completely read and write to both blocks of the serial EEPROM. Okay, so that was a good idea that we scanned our three ICs to check the addresses and we found out that the last IC, our serial EEPROM, actually has two addresses so it splits the memory into two blocks, an upper block and a lower block so if we didn't know that we would write some code and we would find out that we could only access one half of the the memory of that IC and we would be wondering why so that was good that we did that so next we're going to look into the software so you could write your own I2C scanner Okay, here's the basic workings 
of our scanner software. So we have a slave address of hex 8 to hex 77 and we're going to send down that range of addresses in sequence one at a time down the I2C bus looking for an active device. So we'll start off with hex 8, we'll send down hex 8 down the I2C bus, so we'll scan the I2C bus with hex 8 and if there's an active device on the bus it will give back an ACK. Now an ACK will give us a hex 18 in our status register but in this case it's a no so we print out a null or non-active uh, uh, symbol. So we go to the next address, 9, we send it down the I2C bus, we scan the bus and we look at our status register and we get a hex 18 so that's a yes so then we'll print the address 9. So we go to the next address, 0A, we do the same thing and we continue all the way down to hex 77. So now we're going to have a list of all the active devices on our bus. Okay, here's the status codes for the status register, the TWSR. So we're going to send out the slave addresses, hex 8 to hex 77 in sequence, out on the bus, with the 8th bit being the right bit. Now any active device on the bus will respond with an ACK. Now an ACK is when the device pulls the ninth clock pulse on the bus low. And the microcontroller will, will recognize that and give us a hex 18 value in our status register indicating an active device. Otherwise it will give us a hex 20 value. So now we can get a list of all the active devices on our I2C bus. Okay, here's the code running on my Nano and it's written in Flashforth but you can use any language of your choice once you get the idea how it works. So the first thing I do, I assign my bitrate register, control, status, and data and address register to to its addresses, right there. And I have a word 50 kilohertz, so I could actually set up the speed of the I2C bus. This word will actually read the status register, looking for the hex 18 or hex 20. And then I have my I2C uh, command words. There's my start, stop, and we'll do a start and stop function. There's my send. This word will display a hex value with a leading zero, so it's two digits. And the main word is called to scan. So from the OK prompt, I give it an address, then I run to scan, and that will scan the I2C bus, and then it will get a status back. And if it's 18, that means it's got an active device, and 20 means it's not active. So we start out with a start condition, and we wait for that to complete. Then we set the 8th bit as a write bit and then we put that into the register and send it. Then we wait for it to be sent. Then we read the status register. Either it's going to be 18 or 20, then we do stop. So what we could do, we could actually run this word to scan from the OK prompt to show you how it works because this word is actually being used in our main word scanner right here. So we'll actually we'll go to the OK prompt and we'll run this word to scan and we'll check out its operation. Okay, I have TerraTerm up and running on my computer and I'm running flash forth on my Nano so we could exercise some of those fourth words. We could run them independently from the command prompt. So the addresses that are active are hex 20, hex 25, hex 54, and hex 55. So we'll try one of the active addresses. So we'll try 20 if we get an 18, that means that was active. That's from our status register. So we'll try 21, which is not active. And we get a 20. So we'll try 25, which is active. And we get 18. So you see how two scan works. You just give it an address. It will scan the I2C bus and it will give back either 18 if it's active and if uh, 20 if it's non-active. Okay, so now you know how the word to scan works and we're using that word in the, our main word scanner. So basically what we do, we take the first address which is hex 8, we give it to to scan, it will scan the I2C bus and we'll get a return back to the status register. Now if it returns an 18, that means it's active, it'll actually print the address. And if it doesn't return an 18, 
and it will print the null, not active. Then it increments the, the address. Now it will go to hex 9 and do that all over again. And it does that 16 times. There's a for next loop. So it does that 16 times. And there's a nested loop, and it will do that 7 times. And that will give us a scan from hex 8 to hex 77. And that will give us our full scan of our I squared C bus. So that's our little word scanner. And if you write a program to do that, it will make troubleshooting I squared C projects a lot easier.